uh, yeah. stage fright. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Tell me about like, tell me about your um, retreat. Why do you call it a retreat? It's not like you give up. Yeah, I'm actually going to be sending out an email to the participants of the retreat to get their feedback on the event. But for myself, I did have some major breakthroughs uh, from holding the retreat, which I was very surprised with. Like what kind of um, breakthroughs did you have? Um, The major breakthrough that I had was that by conducting this retreat i was able to break some of the lineage karma from the past from the ancestors and heal that for my daughter and those who are to come before us or no after us yeah okay you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, no, yeah, I get yeah. What you mean. So our yeah. kin of the future, I guess I should. Yeah. Say. So you're the, you. Changed, the direction of of the, the karma lineage, if you will, the line, mm-hmm. of it's the same. It's the same every time, the karma cycle goes back around. It's it's just, yes. normally it just stays the same, and people don't really. Yes. Pay attention to it, and what you actually did is said. Well, seeing. By holding this um, retreat, that you actually changed, or and like you threw like this big rock in the middle mm-hmm. of the like like path, like changed the DNA of yeah. it all. Because some, I mean, what I believe in is that we are born with some DNA that um, has this karma attached to us that is not even our own. So, for instance, I could. Um, be born into this world with my mother's um, whatever angst that she has and I don't even realize this so uh, she was a single mother taking care of my brother and I and then so I think well that's the way to live and it's, it's just it's so then I repeat that pattern and also not just by the visual example of how I grew up, but it's just something that is inside us because before that, my grandmother is the same. She ended up being a single mom. And so it's, I just come from a long line of women who struggled, who have so much sadness and guilt and regret And so that, having all that, it's heavy. So it's uh, generation after generation after generation holding on to that, having that. And then here I come. And guess what? That's in my DNA as well. So then I just um, was able to. Yeah. Yeah, But now you, yeah. yeah. Broke it. You could have perpetuated it, but you actually, yeah, you broke it. Yeah. You stopped it. And um, I think I broke it out of, you know a good time in my life and so then knowing that and and it's been the past four years that things have changed that um i've been awakened and that's how i feel i feel like my most of my life i was sleepwalking oh so then four years ago i woke up and i'm like oh my god how did i get here what am i doing and now i'm able to move forward with more ease and um success and there you go that's what that's a good um definition of success <laughs> well you know what i mean like some people think like it's oh, uh, money money or fame, or, fame or, or power and it's like well no the success is that you're not even achieving but you're you're just moving in the right mm-hmm. direction in, in a better direction in a more healthy direction that's right. that's 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 it that's all you have to do anything else that's not success it's something else you know? yeah and it's funny that you say that because for a very long time i could say from my teenage years even well into my 20s huh? i did define success with uh, money and fame because i always wanted to be this actress famous actress you know i am an actress which I am now okay with. I used to think to be successful, I had to be famous at it. Mm. And so now I, 
I recently actually was able to detach from that part of my identity that I created. I really, it, it almost was painful, like letting go of a piece of myself because a piece of myself was, I'm going to be a famous actress. I need to be a famous actress. Everybody knew me as, Ooh, yeah, the actor. Oh yeah. Superstar, superstar, you know? And so I thought that I, to validate myself, I had to be that. And here I, you know, and I'm not walking the red carpet in Hollywood and I'm not in blockbuster movies, but I had to realize like, that's okay because I'm still having fun with it, with the acting side. And then mm-hmm. going into the coaching, I, I was able to put the acting into my coaching by creating my videos. So I'm still doing it. I'm still, mm-hmm. but I, I have even more of purpose behind right. it. It's almost like the acting became a tool set to have rather than just, it's, this is something that gets me money and, and fame and notoriety in that sense. Right. That that no longer was the goal with that. It was like, well, now I can use this skill that you've developed, honed, and keep up with as a means of of doing other, like you're saying, it's a tool in, 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 in these other projects and other endeavors that you're actually working on and they feel more passionate about and more. Yes. And, and it helps with that, right? Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it, just the same as um, I also have a gift of writing as well i remember since being a little Mm -hmm. girl the gift of writing well then wow okay now my writing comes into play it's just so weird it's like through my life i had been picking up all these little tools skills along the way right Uh and thinking i have to be an actress oh man I, i need to be a writer um Oh, and then I created a whole new career of hair and makeup. So now I'm going to be this like well-known platform artist, hair and makeup. And you want to be the next Vidal Sassoon. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. I never wanted to just be like, yeah, I'm going to do hair and makeup. No, I was like, I had to be platform and I had to yeah. stick out from everybody else. And um, I think that's just part of my spirit. Yeah. But I did, I I, I mean, to be able to put all of those things together and now be in my next endeavor of this lifestyle empowerment coaching. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like putting it all together. Like I didn't have to be one or the other. And then Mm -hmm. I've always had the passion of um, being there for women, being a a guide, a support system, a mentor, a friend. I just love that sisterhood. And it's like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. All these years of thinking like, eh, I'm not doing anything. I'm kind of failing at life. I suck. Has turned into, oh, no, all that is coming together Mm -hmm. for this Mm -hmm. endeavor. So don't ever sell yourself short for what you have going on and the skills that you have, even though you're not the um, rock star of that skill. Exactly. Be the Hugh Jackman. The reason why I bring up Hugh Jackman (laughs) Not just because it's Hugh Jackman, um, is the fact, the idea of, okay, Hugh Jackman is Hugh Jackman, right? Everyone's like, it's he's an actor. He's a man's man and he's an actor and he does the, but he also learned how to play the piano. He also mm-hmm. learned how to sing, but he's not known for playing the piano, but he plays it at a very I did good not level. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. He plays the piano, he um, sings. Um, I just know him as Wolverine. Yeah. And, well, I mean, and now he got to oh, use the singing. And the greatest showman. And the greatest showman. He got to use some of that talent there. But if you look at his career, he didn't get to use it really until late, late in his career. And there's spirits that happen Hugh when you Jackman have good energy didn't want going me on. talking about him. <laughs> He's like, when I'm he, more than Wolverine, well, bitch. <laughs> Hugh Jackman is walking along the street and then he, his ears perked up. Someone said, I'm just Wolverine. And he, his spirit came here and knocked over things. And that was creepy. It's okay. the spirit of the Wolverine character <laughs> saying, I'm not just Wolverine. Um, but th- but I that's what it is. Like, that. Yeah, wow. you have all these other, and, and there's other actors, right? Um, True. I forget the guy's name. He's on, um, <laughs> speaking of, superhero characters he's on the avengers he's the one that shoots the arrows um yeah i'm not a marvel person. yeah well you are a marvelous person, you're not a marvel person. but that Touché. actor Touché. he's another one who does that he plays the piano awesome he plays the uh he, he does tap dancing and but they're like at, at, they do it at a very like competitive level but they're not known for that they're not mm. stars in that world right it, it, and wow. and you being able to be an actress, 
Mm-hmm. And and then also be able to do the hair and makeup and also be able to do the and edit. And edit now. You're yeah, actually you're right. not just edit. You're editing, shooting, that's writing true. it. And you're compo- you know, not just shooting it, but you're composing the shots, you're composing the scene because as you've been progressing in your videos, like mm-hmm. I, like today when I saw it, like your background. Yeah. Like it's very different now. Yes, like it's yes, actually yes. staged for the camera. Yes. That's another thing, right? Yes. And you have that eye for that. Gosh, you're so right. And and yeah, you got to put all these. Some credit. Yeah, give yourself credit. You're putting all the and you're you're doing that. You're putting all these hmm. skills together to make one or the other skill at whatever time shine, right? Like, yeah, you could do all of it to make your acting shine. You could do all of it to make your um, uh, uh, self help mm-hmm. that sort of make that a stronger presentation, a stronger um, presence for people, rather than just you standing on the corner. Holding up a, a sandwich. No, holding up a sandwich sign. I didn't I get to finish. Never this. gone there. So that sounds like the retreat was good. You oh got, yeah, the yeah, retreat. Yeah, that we're was, going back to that. Yeah, and then the retreat. It it's it was a good culmination for you to see and experience that. Like you're saying, all of your skills coming together as and forming into one thing yes. right yeah i wrote yeah. the material right i'm standing up in front of people and mm-hmm. speaking and almost like i'm putting on a live theater show in right. front of per- right. people um because despite what everyone thinks it's not just off the cuff you actually had to put maybe not word for word right but you it, have no. to put together some like, kind of presentation like an outline and knowing you know because sometimes it does just take a life of of its own so but i'll have my yeah the important points that I want to, to make and yeah. then elaborate from there, yeah. which I did not used to do. I used to have <laughs> five pages of a script written out and, and be when I would do workshops and uh, be like word for, word, Oh my God. Oh my God. And I was uh, like, what? Yeah. And like you would fumble because you missed one yes. word. And you're like, well, no, it's okay. No one mm. knew you missed the word. No. It's fine. It didn't change. But they the knew set. because I would like, uh, you know? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. but I, but what I learned was to trust because if I'm so passionate about it, let it be organic. And then I just let go. And there honestly is like some higher power is working through me, like giving me the info and I'm just relaying the info. It's almost like I'm just this conduit. And so I, I, uh, gosh, once, once I did that and I let go, whoa. And, And again, like I'm so passionate about something I could just keep going on and on and on. Which does, you know, it could be a problem sometimes. I have to be like, whoa, I talked a lot right now because yeah, I want yeah. them to be so engaged. Right. Oh, and, and that that opens up to that of self-editing, right? And and worry that, yeah. yeah, it's good. You, you have enough passion for it that you can talk about it forever. But then you're right. You begin to, once you get to that point, you begin to then realize that's not the point to get to where I could just talk about this mm-hmm. off the cuff forever. It's like, now I could talk about it. And I know now how to to do it, not just in the, a lot of people think like a concise way means that, you know, you don't know a lot about it. You're just trying to say it quick. And it's like, no, I'm actually trying to get it distilled down in, in the, in a digestible way where you don't have to sit here for mm-hmm. an hour of me rambling when there's only like three minutes of actual content you might want to get out of that, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And you could also start to feel, if you're aware, you'll feel the energy of them being like yeah. moving on, like they'll start shifting and you're like, Oh crap. Okay. Reeling it yeah, back in. Exactly. So, it's like how a comedian does when they, oh, yeah. they test their material and they go out and they, they can, you know, they get to a certain part of their material material and they realize like, yeah, I'm losing the crowd, and so they mark that down. And so the next performance, they don't do it that way. They change it a little bit, and they keep going, keep refining. And, yeah, yeah. I gotta say that that's ballsy, though, <laughs> to go out on stage and try new material, and with the risk of bombing uh-huh. because it doesn't work. Oh, oh yeah. my god! I that is I no, I can't. I I am yeah. too. No, I'm not that brave. Like I need to know that this is what they are here, and they know what they're coming here for, yeah. and I'm going to give that to them. But oh, yeah. oh hell yeah. no! I oh shit! Oh, the refrigerator attacked me, or it was freaking Hugh Jackman. It's again. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in the refrigerator doll. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some water here. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. 